Hello and uh, good evening to you all. Hope you are having a very good day so far. And I would like to welcome you to our online patient meeting. I am your host and as always, just let me know if you can hear me uh, so I know everything is okay and working properly. And and uh, hello to Guillermina, hello to Carolina. Hope you are hello. good as well. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi, it's good to... Okay, perfect. Thanks for confirming this for me. And, uh, well, just let me short you, shortly remind you that uh, you probably already know, uh, but uh, I would also like to remind you that... Um, Thank you for actually showing up here and supporting our Stronger Together cause. And actually, this is all for you so that you can uh, educate yourself, uh, but also ask the most uh, important questions on your uh, specific cases. Find out more on any IVF um, matters and, of course, meet the top fertility expert as well. And uh, you also have a chance to, to meet them every day as we are doing those events uh, two times a day now from Monday to Friday. And uh, this is also, of course, possible because we have such an amazing such amazing partners which you can see on the screen right now and there are so also some uh, ambassadors which you can see right right here as well so huge thank you th to them all uh, of course it wouldn't be uh, possible if if it weren't for them as well but also huge thank you to our guests we ha are having them every day but also you know uh, without them again not possible so uh, hello again Guillermina hello Carolina uh, it's good to have you here and just let me uh, short you, uh, shortly um, introduce uh, them to you so uh, Carolina Alonso and uh, Guillermina they are from uh, Central Gutenberg um, Clinic which is located in Malaga Spain and uh, they are with us today to present a topic on uh, fresh or frozen oocytes for your IVF with donor eggs so uh, they will be able to explain a bit on uh, what is what kind of which of those is actually uh, better if if it is actually how you can say it and well i guess that would be it from me of course remember to type in all of your questions in the chat section and once uh, we will uh, finish with the most common questions we will go with your questions so i guess we can start uh, uh, right now ladies are you ready yes we are ready thank yeah. you so much thank you. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Caroline for just such a lovely introduction and for moderating this event. I would also like to thank IVF Median for making it possible and for looking always after patients. And especially in this situation, also, I would like to thank you all the attendants. I really hope you are all well healthy and your loved one as well are keeping well. Well, we are, uh, we are all aware about the indecision is going on with this COVID-19. There is a lot of uncertainty, but uh, what we all know is that we must keep at home. So I really look, for, we really look forward that this event, it will be make your if not more pleasant and you find it interesting and we can try to solve all your doubts. I would like to start making a small introduction of who we are and what we do. URE Centro Gutenberg is a family clinic founded by Dr. Manuel Martinez Moya and nowadays we, his family, continue working with the same philosophy as he started. The clinic was opened in 87 and in 89, our first IVF baby was born. I know that there is, we are not a big group of hospital. We don't belong to any franchise, but as we always feel, we like, feel like a big family since 89,000 of family who has done a treatment has become part of us. So this is why we consider ourselves like a big uh, clinic. Uh, we keep 
as I say, we keep to aim working in our clinic with the same hopes and dreams, great desire uh, with very capable people with high standards of ethics and dignity. Today, unfortunately, we don't have much time for this presentation. So we will proceed now to what Caroline said to answer the most um, frequent question about the topic of today, which is fresh or frozen oocyte from your IVF with donor eggs. I will now pass the word to my colleague Carolina. She is the egg donation coordinator in our clinic. But before we move forward, I would like to say that unfortunately, our international doctor have not been able to join us today in this event. So in case uh, Caroline, she's the embryologist, as Caroline said, I am the international patient uh, coordinator. Mm -hmm. So in case that we consider that there is any medical question that should be answered by the medical team, as we will have all your data, or you can easily go to our website and ask your question. But if not, as I said, we will have your contact today. We will be very pleased to give you an answer once we have checked with the medical team. So now, as I said, my colleague Caroline, I will pass the word, as I'm sure that most of the questions will be regarding the topic of today. So Caroline, if you wish, you can proceed with the most question. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you so much for that introduction. And now of course, as you. I said, we can go to most common questions from the patients that we receive. And let me just first uh, just read it out. Uh, but perhaps Caroline would like to add something as well. No, just to, I would like to thank you, Guillermina, and you and all the patients for being here today. And I hope I can answer your question and help you a little bit. Perfect. Thank you <laughs> for that. So let's start with the very first question. Is there a better success rate if I use, fre use fresh rather than frozen all sites? Okay. To this question, I really would say that right now there's no difference at all between using fresh and uh, frozen oil sites with the new technology, with the vitrification, the quality of the oil site. It, it should be the same using uh, fresh and, and frozen. And in the latest studios, they confirm the same results. When a patient comes to our clinic, I really can say that there's no difference using fresh or, or frozen. And thank you for explaining that to us. Okay, we will have uh, more detailed questions in a minute. So uh, let's, go, let's go to the next one. So fresh or frozen donor eggs, what's the difference from the medical point of view? Okay, as, as I said, we, I wouldn't say there is a difference from clinical point of view, okay? I could say that, well, the only difference, of course, is uh, with the fresh, we retrieve the oocytes from the ovaries and uh, four hours later, we inseminate the oocytes with the sperm. With the frozen, what we do is we uh, retrieve the oocytes and in two hours we freeze the the sperm with the oocytes we vitrify them and then once the patient comes we just have to defreeze the the oocytes and wait for two hours and then inseminate the oocytes so i really wouldn't say there is a difference in the clinical point of view Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for explaining this to us as well. And uh, so, again, fresh or frozen donor eggs, what's the difference from the treatment organization plan pro point of view? What are pros and cons of frozen uh, versus fresh? For, for these questions, yes, I would say there's a difference between using fresh and uh, 
frozen with the fresh, we have to synchronize the treatment of the egg donor and the recipient. But uh, with the frozen eggs, we just have to uh, assign uh, the frozen oocytes. We don't have to, uh, we don't need synchronization with the cycle between the donor and the recipient. Uh, we reduce the treatment cancellation. We have shorter time, uh, waiting time, because we don't have to wait for the donor to come to do all the blood tests and everything. We just have the size in our bank. We have lower stress for the patients. As I said, we don't have to uh, synchronize the treatments and uh, it's much easier the, uh, the schedule of the cycle. Okay, thank you. So it's just, it's, we would say that it's a matter of uh, preparement, yeah, to get yes. just that much, much easier to, to go with frozen options. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for explaining that to us as well. And now let me go to the next question. How many frozen or fresh oocytes is the optimal number to get for my for my treatment? Uh, I, for us, uh, we guarantee uh, eight mature oocytes in our egg donation. Uh, the Spanish society, fertility society, they also say the optimum number to have two good embryos, uh, it will it will be eight mature oocytes. Of course, it depends on the patient. Sometimes uh, we have a severe male factor, and maybe eight is not enough, and we need more or uh, on the pay, on the partner too it's not the same um uh, young patient that they want to have at least two pregnancies than a patient that comes with 48 years old and they only desire one baby of course we we have to try not to freeze embryos when we know that they are not going to use them Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much again for answering this question. And uh, let me go to this one. So if I get eight frozen oocytes, how many of them will be available for fertilization? How many of them will survive after thawing? Okay, as I said, uh, uh, we think that eight is the optimum number of uh, mature oocytes. So with eight or nine frozen eggs used to be a good number, sh it should be a good number to, uh, to try to defreeze. We have like uh, over 90% of survival. So if we defreeze eight, we should have seven or eight or all, all sides to fertilize. So we try always to decrease uh, between eight and ten oocytes mm -hmm. to okay. warrant to warranty eight mature oocytes, as I said. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much again for uh, tackling this question for us as well. And uh, there is another one here. So, is it a good idea to buy frozen oocytes from a neck bank? What do you think about that? I don't understand really that question. To buy who? The clinic you mean? Uh, uh, to buy frozen oocytes, yes. Like, uh, like not for to... me, no? That I'm working in a clinic to go yeah, so to... elsewhere. Um, not at the clinic, but perhaps elsewhere, yes? From, from actual egg bank. Yes, we do have our own okay. egg bank, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but... Of course, if, if a patient comes, uh, we don't uh, have um, all sides in the egg bank that with the phenotype they are asking for, we do we can buy all sides from an egg bank, but they always have to have the, authori the authorization as a human 
egg bank by the Spanish health. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clearing this, this up as, as well for us. And uh, there's uh, the next question. So is it possible, you have already uh, said a bit of that, but is it possible to buy frozen oocytes from an egg bank from the US where donors are not autonomous and transport to Spain for the treatment? No, it's not, it's not possible because in Spain, uh, the egg donation is anonymous. Uh, the egg donation is regulated by the law 14, 2006, uh, which it says the egg donation is a volunteer, anonymous, and altruist act. And uh, if, as you said, if a patient wants to bring donor uh, oocytes from a, an egg bank where they know uh, who's the egg donor it's impossible to we, we cannot mm -hmm. okay it. not it's... us not in all Spain no. it's mm -hmm. totally forbidden Okay, perfect thank you so much well actually uh, there's another question uh, of course uh, a little bit um, similar to, to the previous one actually what do you think what do you what do you think about proposed law change regarding egg donation in Spain? Donation is supposed to be non-animals may decrease number of donors. Any comments on that? Yeah, they have been talking about that. It, we don't know what's going to happen. Of course, it can happen sometime. We will see what it happens. I guess we will have less egg donors. And as it happens in the other countries, it will be all different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So for now... But Thing is certain uh, yeah. but and i also guess that no sometimes when they ask us um why most a patient come from abroad is not only regarding about the anonymous is regarding also about a uh, medical experience in spain and sometimes they want to take um the opportunity to go abroad to join uh, in somehow some like a uh, holidays they go abroad and um, they sometimes they find it more relaxed and they get out of their own routine and make it easier for them. So they can join both things. They can take their dream to, to do the, the treatment, but also to know another, another country. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much for uh for you know, for your opinion on that, of course, for both of you, uh, definitely it's no, it's not certain right now, but definitely it's something that uh, many patients are wondering. Yes, what, what if? Let's yeah. say. Um, all right. So thank you so much for answering those most common question. Now we will go to our patients' questions. There are some of those ready uh, um, right here. So uh, let me start with the very first one. I've seen the latest data from SART, ASRM, from US uh, regarding success rates, uh, live births of fresh versus frozen oocytes. And for the all clinics, on average, live births from frozen oocytes were approx approximately 10 15% lower than from fresh oocytes. I'm just wondering why there is the difference over there. Okay, she she's saying that in the in USA they offer ten percent less using frozen or sites. Well, yes, from uh, start are like because, yes, the of course the results they are gonna depend a lot on the clinic, on the training, on the all the techniques they use. And I don't know in we, which uh, years they've done or the results in the last European human reproduction in the ESRE 2018, a large uh, studio uh, was presented from a Spanish clinic with many cases and they 
also said, like I said before, that no difference uh, were observed. I uh, read in these two last weeks uh, for this web webinar a lot of studios, and they also say, uh, of course, some clinics they they have less percent of um, success using the frozen all sites. I guess it depends on the clinic, the results. I just said our results are in our web page. We send every year our results to the Spanish Fertility Society where uh, they, they can see all the results from all the clinics in the website. And they are what, what I just said. Okay, thank you. So there are like many different aspects that can actually, uh, you know, have uh, influenced those those results as well. Yes. Yeah? So it's just yeah. it can even um, be different. For, it can be var vary from uh, clinic to clinic as well. Right. Of course. Yes. For and it, and as I said in the years, of course, mm -hmm, like exactly. maybe like five years ago, I didn't have the same results that I can say now. Mm -hmm, perfect. Thank you so much for your question and for helping as well. And now let me go to the next question. Is it good idea to freeze the sperm of my partner during first visit? Avoid problems if fresh sperm is not good at the day of fertilization. Okay. Uh, we always offer to all our patients the possibility of uh, freezing the sperm in the first visit. Uh, depends on the quality of the sperm. It can uh, uh, be lower quality using frozen sperm. I have to say that. Depends. What we have to do always is uh, a sperm test. See how the sperm is because, uh, for example, if the sperm has an infection, it can be treated before. So it's better to use fresh sperm or uh, it doesn't have an infection, but uh, maybe the quality is low. And if the patient takes some vitamins, some uh, for the oxidative stress, for example, treatments, maybe it's better to, uh, to treat the patient before and use a fresh sperm. But if the, the sperm is okay, and the, the quality of the sperm is okay. It's a very good option to freeze the sperm as uh, once we have the sperm frozen, the patient can come to the clinic for embryo transfer and stay uh, one night, for example. They come, they do the embryo transfer, and they can leave on the same day or the, or the day after. But if we don't have frozen sperm and we have to use use it fresh, we need the patient to come, give us the sperm, and then five days after, we have to do embryo transfer. So they have to stay at least one week. And then, for example, in case the patient comes, the day we have to fertilize the oocyte, and they have any problems uh, getting the, the sample, is less stressful to having a frozen sperm. So just in case we have to, to use the frozen one. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much again for the question and uh, your answer uh, to this one. Okay, we have another one actually coming up here. Uh, this is uh, well something that you have already, uh, I guess, a bit told, but perhaps you can add anything. What is the percentage of frozen versus uh, fresh embryos for transfer? Which is better? Okay. Uh, I have the results from 2018, and we had uh, 65% of fertilization per transfer with using frozen and a fresh oils, with fresh oil sites, we got a 66% per transfer. But then with, uh, if we see the percent of uh, 
pregnancy by patient, not by transfer. I mean, using the frozen embryo plus uh, the sorry, the fresh embryo plus the frozen embryo. The cumulative pregnancy is 81 using fresh or using frozen oocytes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much again for your question and uh, helping out as well. And uh, there is another question right here. So let me go straight to it. So is there a recommended freeze time for frozen donor eggs? Any comments on that? Is the recommendation freeze time? I don't know what the question really means. A, freeze, a time meaning since we retrieve the when, oocytes? Yeah, I guess I, I would say I so. Guess, but I would first, say if, if you can perhaps follow up, but I guess I would understand it that way as well. So I think so. Uh, it's once we retrieve the oocytes, they should be in two hours frozen. Mm -hmm. In two hours. Okay. In two hours, yes. Not uh, longer than that. No. Okay, perfect. Thank you for clearing this up. Uh, but of course, if you meant something else by this, <laughs> please let us know. Okay, we will go back to your question, of course. Though. So go ahead and let us know. Uh, but in the meantime, let's le have a look at the next question. It will be a longer one, this one. Is there an expiry period on frozen embryos? We had a frozen egg waiting shipment to clinic abroad when the straw was subse subsequently sorry, thawed on day of transfer. There was nothing in the straw. The frozen embryo was three to four years old. Can the embryos die while in frozen state? No, it doesn't have an expiry time. It, they can be frozen during all the reproductive uh, time of the of the patient well i mean sorry with the own eggs with the frozen eggs there's no time so many studies say the the quality of the oocyte doesn't change you can it's the same uh, it's the same using the same day you freeze and defreeze and 10 years after once is frozen, the quality is going to be the same. Okay. So if there's no embryo in the straw, it's because when you are freezing it, something happens and it's not in the straw, but from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you so much for explaining that. So it's like, and if I just might ask, so is there like uh, at your clinic at least, uh, do you, for how long are you able to like store those uh, embryos? I mean, there is like a, a I don't know, uh, is it, there is no limit or if you could tell me something on well, that? Okay, about uh, talking about uh, donor eggs. Yes. Because mm -hmm. because donor eggs, there's no no time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't. I can. I I even. I cannot destroy any oocyte or any embryo. If just if a, a patient has a, a couple has their own embryo or their own oocyte. Okay. And uh, during all the repro reproductive uh, lifetime, they can be frozen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So um, if you could take a look at this one, actually. So does the quality deteriorate over time of the frozen embryo? Yes. That, as I said, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't deteriorate over time. Yeah. Once it's frozen, the quality is going to be the same. Of course, if you maintain your your bank, your your egg bank with the nitrogen liquid, and you mm -hmm. are careful. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, quite a similar question, but perhaps you could uh, add. Uh, I just want to make sure that the patients got the answer as well. I meant uh, this is a follow-up question from the 
not the previous one, but the uh, follow-up. Yes. This is a follow-up question. Sorry. Yes. I meant if an egg donor had frozen eggs for over a year or more, does this reduce the chances of success of transfer? I can say no. Yep. She doesn't Perfect. have to worry really because it's going to be the same. Exactly the same. So anyone exact, uh, exactly <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Okay, we can definitely trust you on that. It's just, you know, I, I definitely... <laughs> I understand. hope so. <laughs> okay, uh, I understand completely. Uh, so this is, uh, I, be I guess you receive all kinds of questions like this. Uh, many times, I guess, yes. patients are worried that, you know, they yes. are frozen and something might still happen. Yeah. And and when my patient comes, I always say, trust in us and really, if, of course, if the quality wasn't the same, I wouldn't use them. Okay, perfect. Our goal, our goal is always the same, have 100% of pregnancy. So I think that yeah. answered the question. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you so much again for, uh, for the question and your advice on that. And uh, of course, your answer. And uh, let me show you the next question here. Do you usually freeze embryos separately or together? If two embryos are frozen in one straw and you want to thaw only one for transfer, do you have to thaw the other? Or is it possible to remove only one for thawing, even though they are in the same straw? Okay, we always try to uh, freeze separately one for a straw, okay? We usually transfer on day five, so we freeze blastocyst on day five. And uh, like we always now freeze one, okay? But it is true that sometimes we defreeze embryos uh, that they were frozen five, six years ago. And uh, we, in that time, we froze them sometimes two in the same straw. What we do is we defreeze the, the embryos and if we just transfer one, we freeze the other one and there's no difference. Once again, in results, there's no difference. Uh, because of uh, freezing two times the embryo is not going to change the result. So if you have two embryos in the same straw and you want to transfer just one, you don't have to worry. Would you have you, the embryology can defreeze the two? And if they are of good quality, they can freeze it. They can freeze it again and use it for another attempt. And thank you once more for uh, answering that for us. And now we have another question, a different one this time. Uh, do you have a 100% guarantee, money back guarantee program? And if so, how much it costs? No. Okay. Is there... Mm. No, Maybe. sorry. I was just. I just wanted to know if my uh, ca colleague Caroline was going to to ask that. Uh, we do not actually um, offer any guarantee program. I say before we keep with the aim philosophy of Dr. Manuel Martinez Moya, and he always said, "What is you can never guarantee any in medicine." We wish. But uh, seriously, we don't offer any program, but we do know people, we work with uh, some companies that they do offer. So in case patients uh, ask for this information, we are very happy to introduce to people that we know that they do offer and they have um, good ethics and standards and we can give their contact and put them in contact, but not as the clinic directly. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, as well. And now we will have a longer question. Okay. So here it is. 
Uh, we froze my husband's sperm multi multiple times at different clinics and had them all tested. The best sample is one from 12 years ago. Has vitrification changed that much over the last 12 years? So with the defrosting might not be as viable to use to fertilize the egg. We would then test the embryo. So would mean it would free be freezing the embryos for future transfer. So might there be future deterioration? Okay. Sorry, I'm going to read it, okay? Because... Yes, of course. Thank you, Sam. I know it's a longer one, so yes, yes. A few questions in one, so go ahead and just take your time to. To check it. Yeah. I don't really understand the question, really. Okay, uh, I think, sorry, because, but I... No, it says uh, the vitrification, but we are talking always about vitrification in in eggs, no, in sperm. And I think mm -hmm. this is asking about vitri sperm vitri vitrification. Yes, it, uh, I guess that would, uh, yeah, has and sperm multiple we times. Don't, yeah. We don't vitrify the, the sperm, so. Okay, perhaps if you could uh, just uh, add something and let us know what you mean by yes, that so we about, can be sure and know yes, how, because, how to properly answer okay yes I because believe... when you say sorry caroline but we mm -hmm. say we then test the embryo i don't know what test uh, they mean mm -hmm. okay it's fine let's let's give it a, a minute i believe someone is typing so perhaps uh, sh okay i guess it's about the genetic testing, okay. Uh, could you, okay, if you could just let us know. The genetic testing, uh, about uh, the testing in the sperm, but the genetic testing, for example, for that question is not really, is, is not, the genetic test is not going to answer the question about the, uh, the sperm. I don't know if the husband has any disease or mm -hmm. All for right. the genetic so testing. Because, for example, in in a, in a, in a Spain, we need uh, to have an indication for uh, the genetic testing. We cannot just Embryo, embryogenetic testing for both egg and and sperm. Yes. But if we don't, if it doesn't have any indication in Spain, at least we cannot do just a, a genetic test in any embryo, just because uh, the patients want to make sure that the sperm uh, was okay or not. It has to have any disease or multiple uh, many miscarriages for example two uh, three pregnancy loss for example it will be an indication for a genetic testing or any genetic disease that can, can be related so we can do a genetic test but just to make sure that the uh, quality of the sperm was okay we cannot do the genetic testing I don't know, Angela. Okay. Well, okay. Let's uh, let's let me show you the, the follow up. Okay, it's right here. Yes, I had eleven IVS when three miscarriages as well as donor eggs did not result in me getting pregnant. So we yes, we could do then. Uh, we have to study anyways to do uh, uh, all the. A clinical study. We need much more information, of course, to indicate a genetic testing. But with uh, all these eleven IVF and but the three pregnancy loss, we as with donor eggs, 
because if it's with donor eggs, then of course the, the sperm can have something, <coughs> some a, any problem, and maybe we can do the PGS and find the the problem. All right. Well, thank yes. you so much for. Of course, that. all the we we will we need more more information and we have to discuss uh, all this but i could say that it could be a an option to do a genetic testing to the embryo to see if the sperm has yes that we have but maybe the embryos are okay and then we what we see is uh, the uterus the endometrium but it doesn't have for the pregnancy loss, maybe it's not the embryo, maybe it's the in the endometrium or the uterus, or there are many factors that they are involved in the pregnancy loss and the um, embryo transfer failure. Thank you so much uh, for for you know for that question as well as your uh, and then remember that if you would like uh, to get in touch with the uh, with the doctor or of course the team at Ura, they will be happy to get back to you with all the answers. Definitely, they will need more details, uh, but I am sure that can be done. You can also email uh, send an email to me. I'll be happy to forward this to them. Uh, so I hope that I am sure they will be able to to assist you. Okay. All right, thank you so much. And now let me go to the next question. Do you uh, culture using embryo? Is it Jen? I'm not sure, sorry. In your clinic, do you recommend it? Is it only used up to day three or is it okay to use it up to day five? Okay, I don't, I don't know what embryo gen, embryo gene, we don't we don't use it. I don't know if like if it's like a kind of culture media. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess is we used to work with another one. It's called Embryo Blue, but the Sorry, the results were the yes. That's what I think. I'm not, if she can yes, <laughs> try to you help me, just uh, let us know if it's about I, the embryo I'm blue, sorry. just to make sure. Yeah, I'm, I it I'm is. sorry, I don't know embryo gene. We do try, we do, as I said, we do culture. Uh, okay. It's uh, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a media. Yes, we use another media with, for the culture, and we, as I said, we culture all our embryos up to day five. Five, six. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for clearing this up for us as well. Uh, and of course, for uh, your assistance with that as well. Okay, and uh, now let me go um, to the next question that we have. And here it is. Can an IVF fail because of the donor eggs? Uh, clinics offer different packages of donor eggs. So to me, it makes sense that not all donor eggs lead to pregnancy yes yes it is true of course we try to select all our donors uh, they are all between 18 and uh, 30 we do gynecological tests we try to make sure that they are gonna be okay but of course sometimes when they all the patients are well informed the gynecologist always explains to the patient that is this is not 100 mm -hmm. uh, that is it well explained in our uh, informed consent okay so it is it is true that sometimes it's not very usual it's not very usual and uh, in a very 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 few time has happened and uh, we have talked to our patients and we have uh, done discounts in different cycles and yeah. but of course we can we cannot say that the 100 percent of the the egg donors are 
uh, they are going to get pregnant. Mm, Even okay. though, we, of course, we try, we do many tests, we, they pass many filters, but of course, once again, we cannot say that we have the 100% of our donors uh, that they are going to give 100% of pregnancy. Mm, of course. Thank you so much for uh, for your, again, for the question and uh, your, your helping out as well. Um, and we will be slowly finishing, uh, but I am sure you have many questions coming so just go ahead and type them all in the in the chat section uh, so that uh, they the, the of course Carol, carolina and and uh, guillermina can answer and now let me go to the next question for you my amh level is four uh low ovarian reserve right i guess i had a successful pregnancy at 42 i'm now 46 years old is my only chance now uh donor eggs well an embryologist okay i'm not a gynecologist but i can say with our results we do not we do not have any pregnancy with 46 years old okay but we can with own. give with own eggs yes but uh, with donor egg we have a high percent as i said an 80 percent of pregnancy with egg donor i could say that mm -hmm. it's, it's the only chance of getting of getting pregnant of course I can never say you have 0% of getting pregnant with your own eggs, but if you have low reserve, because the only thing, uh, well, do of course a PGD, but it's, it's going to be very, very difficult to get pregnant mm -hmm. with right. a low reserve and 46 years old. Okay. So it's a question of time. Mm -hmm. I guess that if you're 46 and you try it with your own age, then there is a limit here in Spain. You can we cannot proceed with any treatment, IVF treatment when you're over 50. So it's also a question of time that the patient should not miss the opportunity to to have a baby, even if well. The chances with their own eggs are very low, but at least there is a, also some other techniques that will allow patients All right. Thank to you. have, have a, a success pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you again for your question and uh, your answer as well, both of you, of course. And we actually have another uh, similar question about I AMH. So how good or bad uh, is an AMH reserve 1.2? I am 39. Uh, perhaps you can comment on that as well, although I know it's not necessarily the, uh, the question exactly. If any. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, the, this level of is, is low, but we have to do the scan and the gynecologists have to see the have to see the history and and then we'll recommend to do an IVF with their own eggs or not. Okay, not we he, the gynecologist cannot consider doing the IVF with egg donation or own eggs with just that yeah. level of hormone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, you have failure attempts before or not or but as i said uh, the ovarian reserve is very important too okay perfect thank you so much again let me remind you that uh, if you would like to just share a little bit more details uh, of course you can uh, get in touch with the uh, ladies here of course but also uh, and anyone from the team will be happy to to get back to you i have sent you the links right now uh, actually this video is going to be uh, available with with those links here and also you have a 
no option to actually ask your own questions there and be connected with uh, with the uh, with the team or a team as well okay and as i mentioned we will be for so, uh, sorry um slowly finishing so it will be like our final call for your questions okay uh so go ahead and do it uh, and now let me go to the next question do you use time lapse incubators at your clinic and do you recommend them yes we do use time lapse incubators and we always offer them to all our patients uh, as uh, we always say you have more tools to select the embryo for embryo transfer. For those who don't know, the time lapse incubators, they have the same conditions of temperature, CO2 and O2, but the big difference with the conventional incubators is that they have a camera inside. Uh, it shows uh, pictures of the embryo every 15 minutes. So you have much more information uh, of the embryo. So once you have to select the embryo and you do single embryo transfer, as you are just transferring one blastocyst, as much more information you have, uh, better is going to be the selection of the blastocyst with the highest potential of pregnancy. Okay. I don't know. Hello? I cannot hear Caroline. Not me either. Hello, hey. Can yeah, yeah, you're there. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, I hope you can hear me now. It's yes, uh, I do disrupted for a second but i am here no worries <laughs> so i just wanted to to say thank you as you already see um we have some shout outs right here so i'm not the only one who uh, who is thankful that you have been able to join us today um thank you so much uh, Guillermina, and thank you so much carolina for for being with us again supporting our uh, stronger together initiative it's it's really good to have you here it's not our first time and i hope it's not the last one as well it's always so the way <laughs> Exactly. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Ara, is there anything else you would like to add? No. no, yes. Thanks to everyone and really hope that I have helped you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, of course, just uh, wanted to, to remind you that uh, this is not uh, over today. OK, if you uh, if you wish, you can join us at 8 p.m. UK time. We will have another webinar uh, with a great doctor um, and uh, this time from Russia. In fact, uh, Dr. Diana Obidna. So you can go ahead and uh, join our um, webinar uh, very, very soon. Um, and also, um, I just wanted to uh, say that, of course, you can find all the videos on myivfencers.com uh, and there also will be uh, this uh, meeting available very soon. Please follow us on our YouTube channel. You will be up to date, up to date with all the events. As you know, there are plenty of events coming. Uh, again, we will be here tomorrow on Thursday and on Friday, 6 p.m. UK time, 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, happy to have you all here again. Huge thank you to joining us and huge thank you again to Guillermina and Carolina. Have a great thank evening. You. And you too. Well, we are definitely in touch. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you very much. Thank bye. you very much for everything. Bye.